that's the main thing. We definitely want to finish towards the top of our co uh, conference, the OAC, which we definitely can. Uh, it just depends on if we can put the team, all the team scores together. Controlling the position and being the aggressor for most of the game, the Heidelberg men's soccer team was unable to find the back of the net and it came back to haunt them when Oberlin broke through in the 89th minute to break the scoreless tie. The first period opened up with the student princes fighting, getting six shots and two corner kicks before Oberlin recorded their first shot. The Berg ended up outshooting Oberlin 12-3 in the first half, but despite that edge, they entered halftime with a tie. Things looked to be going much of the same way in the second half as the two teams had a defensive battle that seemed like it was going to last throughout until the 89th minute. The student prince's record fell to 3-4 in two with the defeat. Good evening, Tiffin, and welcome to another broadcast of WHEI New Center 10, Live at 5. Tonight's program is brought to you by the Department of Communication and Media from inside the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. New Center 10, Live at 5 is your number one campus source for bringing you the latest news around the state, around Tiffin, and around the Berg. Be sure to stay tuned in as well tonight for our social spotlight as we check out the pulse of Berg students and find out what they're thinking about on the hottest topics. Coming up, an All-American Soapbox Derby races his last race. And also, we'll look into Heidelberg's self-designed study program. We'll catch up on today's hottest trends in social media. And we'll catch up on the latest sports updates. Don't touch that remote. WHEI News Center 10, live at 5, starts now.
Good evening, Tiffin, and welcome to WAT 10 Live at 5 for Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. I'm Laura Beta. And I'm Ashley Rasicott. Let's get to our first story of the night. Last week, WHEI brought you the story of one unfortunate skunk who got his head stuck in a beer can on Ohio Miami University's campus. Concerned feedback from National Animal Rights Group, PETA, and MU's resident advocates for animals group caused Miami University's president, David Hodge, to support widespread rodent safety on campus. PETA and Advocates for Animals are, so are sponsoring and supplying awareness posters and heavier campaigns on not only Miami University's campus, but campuses all over. A school election in Lorain, Ohio, led a spurned student and her father to sue. Allison Brown and her father claim that Clearview High School staff not only bullied her, but also showed an obvious bias to her opponent, leading Allison to lose the election. Clearview's principal, Jessica Tafe, commented that the elections are fair and that she and the rest of her staff would not ever do anything to make the students feel badly or uncomfortable. Cleveland police are investigating after a near Train and Richner Avenues early Wednesday morning. Federal investigators are also on the scene. Investigation also continues with the missing girl, whose car was found earlier this month. No further details are available. Freddie moved to Akron in 1953 as a 14-year-old from his home state of Indiana who had a dream. He accomplished his dream of winning the All-American Soapbox Derby. He wore his championship gold jacket proudly his entire life since that fateful day in August of 1953. His last one was last year as a 74-year-old cancer patient who suspected it would be his last chance to relive his Derby Downs victory from 60 years earlier. That wraps up our local news segment for the day. But don't go anywhere, because we'll have your biggest campus stories on the other side of these short messages. Hi, I'm Enya Granados, and you're watching WHEI on TV10. Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. In the heart of Heidelberg's campus lies the Fireside Cafe and Pub, featuring a relaxing and engaging space welcome to the public. Fireside's menu includes sandwiches, salads, wraps, desserts, and even a soothing latte or coffee, offering a wide selection of new and wholesome food options. Fireside Cafe Pub also serves a variety of refreshing drinks to accompany its cozy atmosphere. Come experience Fireside's new fall menu and visit us on Instagram at Berg Dining Services. and I just love California raisins. At our house, we eat California raisins on our cereal for breakfast, out of hand for lunch, and as an after-school snack. And good health starts with good nutrition. What better way than with all-natural California raisins? They're fat and cholesterol-free, low in sodium, with no added sugar. News Center 10, live at 5. Let's get started on our Heidelberg campus news segment. Heidelberg is now doing Fall Fridays. Fall Fridays are a way for prospective students to visit campus in a group or alone. Students will be given a tour and lunch. They can schedule a meeting with coach to go to the bookstore or anything else they must do while on campus. Going through the application and financial aid process can be difficult. 
So Fall Fridays offered the opportunity for the prospective student to meet with an admissions counselor to learn more about the application and financial aid process and get to meet with a faculty member in their major. A lot of them may have gotten an email with a link that would allow them to click right on and automatically log in to register. Or you can call the office, stop by, or talk to one of the admission counselors about getting registered for a specific date. If you would like any more information, see Sarah Gilbert in the admissions office. The annual Patricia Adams Lecture Series will be making its way onto campus next Thursday, October 2nd. This year, Heidelberg is welcoming Jackie McMullen, a newspaper, a newspaper ESPN analyst and author. Students are excited to join McMullen for her keynote presentation. 175 students have signed up for the keynote, reaching the maximum limit. However, students still have a chance to get involved in this year's lecture series. Ashley Helmstetter from the Institutional Advancement Office explains how to do this. Students are absolutely still invited to register for dinner. Right now, we have reached our capacity at 175 students. However, we do have a wait list and students will cancel. So I highly encourage that students who are interested and may have missed uh, their opportunity to sign up for the keynote that they go ahead and that they go ahead and go through BergSync and do the sign up now. Uh, and that will open up an opportunity. Students can reserve their spot on the wait list. Like always, this event will be a hit. So hurry on to BergSync to reserve your spot for this year's keynote address and dinner. Students interested in pursuing a degree not offered by Heidelberg can now create one with the self-designed studies program. This is a newer program on campus. According to the Heidelberg website, students will work with their academic advisor and another advisor of their choice and create the major. The student and the two advisors decide on the coursework, then the major and the coursework needs to be approved by the self-designed studies committee. Students in the program will double major with the created major and one offered here on campus. Dr. Mark O'Reilly is part of the self-designed studies committee and he thinks that the program is a great part of, Heidelberg, of the Heidelberg curriculum. He believes that more students will stay at Heidelberg or be interested in attending. Heidelberg can't offer every possible, every conceivable major. Having self-design, however, allows Heidelberg to advertise to a prospective student the possibility of creating a niche major, so offering something that isn't in the cap. The self-designed studies program will continue to provide current and prospective students with the chance to get the education that they want. That's really cool that they offer something like that here at Heidelberg. Yeah, I think it's a really unique opportunity, and I know I have a couple friends who are kind of interested in that, so I wonder how many students will take advantage of it. Yeah, totally. That's all we have for Berg's Campus News today. We'll get into all the latest news and stories from the social media world next. News Center at 5. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Brianna. And you're watching WHEI TV 10. Have fun! Woo! Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. America's service members and veterans are strong, forged out of bravery, sacrifice, and duty. Sometimes reaching out for help can be the most challenging and worthwhile mission of all. When you recognize something isn't right, make the call to the Veterans Crisis Line or Military Crisis Line. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1.
Sergeant Michelle Garcia served meritoriously in Iraq and has the medals to prove it. Corpsman Richard Stokely took the skills he learned in Vietnam and put them to good use as a paramedic. But soon after leaving the military, these veterans faced homelessness. Even after Michelle lost all her savings, and even after Richard battled for years, they both reached out for help when they needed it most. A simple phone call put them in touch with a trained professional from the VA. If you know of or are a veteran in need, make Hello and welcome to our Social Spotlight segment. Let's check out what's trending in the world of social media. Two stars from the reality TV show, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, released their news of their separation on Saturday. After allegedly finding dating accounts linked to Sugar Bear, or Mike Thompson, Mama June, also known as June Shannon, released the news publicly, claiming that they are taking a break to figure out some things in their relationship. In a release statement, Shannon announced she is considering relocating with her daughters following the latest episode of the show. Mama June said that regardless of the outcome of the situation, the four daughters will remain the number one priority. Today's Wednesday, which means normally it would be time for our social segment with Scotty C. But this week we have something a little different in store. Let's get to know more about the women's soccer team. I'm Christina Neal, I'm a senior and I'm a forward. 10 fun facts about me is I played semi-professional soccer out of Columbus. Um, I'm a reserve police officer. I'm also an amateur MMA fighter. Um, um, I'm allergic to alfalfa. I am probably the most awkward player on our team. I'm a criminal justice major, minor in psychology and Spanish. <laughs> I'm going into military, military after I graduate and I am Princess Peach. I'm Emily Hafton, I'm a senior and I'm usually a forward. Uh, ten fun facts about me, cameras make me nervous. <laughs> I also play basketball here at Heidelberg. My best friend and also partner in crime is Christina Neal. I'm terrified of llamas. I've seen basically every scary movie ever made. I'm allergic to cherries and I can make weird shapes with my tongue. I can flip it over, I can bend it, and I can clover it. I am the real Slim Shady. <laughs> I'm Hannah Gregory, I'm a senior, I'm a communications major. Uh, I have an older sister and a younger brother. Um, oh, should I start that over? My position. <laughs> All right, I'm Hannah Gregory, I'm a senior. I play anywhere but goalie, but mostly forward for right now. <laughs> I have an older brother. All right, oh, just start over. No, I don't have an older brother. I think so. Let's go. Starting over. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. Ready? Go. I'm Hannah Gregory. I'm a senior. I play anywhere but goalie. Mostly forward though. I'm a communication major. I have a younger brother and an older sister. Uh, I'm very outdoorsy, very active. Love to work out, go hiking, four wheeling. Um, take my dogs on walks, <laughs> lots and lots of walks. And I have one cat. Um, I work at Carmi's. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, I'm artistic. And that's about it. <laughs> That's all we have for our Social Spotlight segment. Let's send it back to the desk with Laura and Ashley. Thanks, Elizabeth. So that's really cool that we got to see some of our senior soccer players. So what's some fun facts about you? Well, let's see. I'm also a senior, just like those three girls we saw. Uh, I'm from Massachusetts, so I'm not oh. from anywhere near Heidelberg. And if I could live in the water, I would. Like if it were a, a possible thing to live underwater or in the water rather than on land, I think I would. Okay. What well, about you, Laura? What's some fun facts? I'm a sophomore. I am a double major. Um, what's something fun? Um, I've played violin since I was in kindergarten. Ooh, cool talent. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. And <laughs> let's see. If I could live anywhere, 
I'd no probably way. live in either Ireland or England. Ooh, both really cool places. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, it's time to throw it over to Stacy to, to take a look at today's top sports stories. The Heidelberg University golf team opened up their season on Tuesday, September 9th at the John P. Spice Memorial Tournament at the Ironwood Golf Club. They finished in 11th place out of 15 teams. The team's second competition of the year came on Monday, September 15th in Alliance, Ohio at the Alliance Country Club. After shining in his first collegiate competition at the John P. Spice Tournament, freshman Henry Bourne finished 26 overall, which was the best score for the student princes in the whole tournament. Their next competition is next Monday at the John Carroll Invitational at the Shaker Heights Country Club. Freshman Henry season has been going pretty well so far, and the team as a whole is improving. Also goes on saying they want to finish towards the top of the Ohio Athletic Conference. Certainly an easy goal for the Berg if they keep improving the way they have been. Uh, it's been going real good. Um, we, we're struggling to put rounds together, but overall we're improving, and that's the main thing. We definitely want to finish towards the top of our uh, conference, the OAC, which we definitely can. Uh, just can put the team, all the team scores together. And being the aggressor for most of the game, the Heidelberg men's soccer team was unable to find the back of the net, and it came back to haunt them when Oberling broke through the 89th minute to break the scoreless tie. The first period opened up with the student princes fighting, getting six shots and two corner kicks before the Oberlin return recorded their first shot. The Berg ended up outshooting Oberlin 12 to 3 in the first half, but despite that edge, they entered halftime with a tie. Things looked to be going much of the same way in the second half, as the two teams had a defensive battle that seemed like it was going to last throughout until the 89th minute. The student prince's record fell to 3-4 and 2 with the defeat, and will have a weekend off before traveling to Denison University on Wednesday, October 1st. That non-conference match is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. Thanks for sports. Thanks, Stacy. So, do you think the soccer team can come back from that one? I hope so. Yeah, I, I mean, their record isn't bad, so I think yeah. we should be seeing some better games from them soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. When we return, we will talk about some issues with the newest iPhones. I'm Tori Hasenlaub. And I'm Morgan Brandt. And, and you're, you're watching WHEI TV 10. <laughs> Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Hey, what's up? I'm Bella. Flores. Yo, what up? This is Vinny Guadagnino. I'm Nick Cannon. Hi, I'm Aziz Ansari. That was your line. You can help by joining DoSomething.org. DoSomething.org. That's why I'm teaming up with DoSomething.org. <laughs> Getting out of the military, I was missing this camaraderie. It's frustrating when you try and talk to people that don't understand. I still had the anger, I still had the uh, addictions, but we didn't talk about that. Came to a point where it's like, okay, I really need to talk to somebody about this. Family more or less encouraged me, you know, go, go to the VA. It's okay to go get help. It's okay to talk to people, because it takes true strength to ask for help. Hear veterans' real stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net. Help Ricky Rubio save a life at heartrescuenow.com. Welcome back to WHEI New Center 10, Live at 5. To the last story of the night. As almost everyone knows, the new iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus recently came out. Not everyone is team iPhone, though, and there have been some concerns regarding the new phones, especially the iPhone 6 Plus. The new iPhone 6 Plus can be severely bent with nothing more than a couple bare hands. Of course, you shouldn't try to purposefully bend a phone that you just spent hundreds of dollars on, but people have also been reporting that the newest iPhones are bending out of place without much effort at all. 
Apple hasn't responded to any of the requests for comment. I think that's a bit concerning that they just bend. Yeah, I mean, I have an iPhone 4, and I don't think mine would ever bend like that. So were you thinking about getting an iPhone 6? No, I actually just got a smartphone like a month ago for the first time ever. Oh, so you're all set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you for watching WHEI New Center 10, live at 5. Our program tonight was produced and presented by the Department of Communication and Media from inside the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Thank you for watching today's broadcast, and remember to tune in again tomorrow. I'm Laura Beta. And I'm Ashley Rassicott. And on behalf of Stacy, Elizabeth, and all of the WHEI production crew, we thank you for watching.